I had incisions on both sides of my hip. And then uh, like Dr. Asiak said that the bone is like a PVC pipe. So the nails were inserted into my femurs and then they were put in place by putting screws at the either ends of the femurs. And then my bone was broken in the center, the femur. And then I used a magnetic device every day, four times a day uh, to lengthen up to one millimeter each day. Uh, so that's how I started. It was not an overnight process. Tell us about the rehab after the procedure and, and how long did that go on? After the surgery for the first couple of weeks, I was exclusively using the walker. And then slowly I started to gain my mobility with and without the walker. I was able to walk. I was afraid to go to restroom or take showers because I was afraid to fall. But as long as I put my hands on something uh, to hold on to, I was okay. And then I was also going every two weeks, I was visiting Dr. Asiag. He was taking my x-rays. Now keep in mind that because I was lengthening every day, a gap was forming in my femur. So using those x-rays, Dr. Asiag was monitoring my progress very carefully. He was making sure that the callus is growing. And because of that growth of that callus, he was decreasing or increasing the amount of lengthening I could do so that th this procedure could be safer for me. Uh, and then we continued and I attended the physical therapy twice a week as well. And uh, here I am. Glad it worked so well for you, uh, Raz. And Dr. Michael, I, I, I would assume that you are one of the few specialists out there that are doing this. I want you to comment on the potential downsides, specifically surgical complications. There should be three things that can happen. As you lengthen the bone, muscles don't necessarily follow without the appropriate rehab and physical therapy. So the knee, the hip, the ankle will tend to bend. And it's really the patient's duty to prevent that from happening. Uh, nerves get stretched, they get irritated. Bone formation may be bad. So all of these potential pitfalls can be fixed by really just simply slowing down and by doing a few little adjunct surgeries at the initial surgery. So it has to be done in the right hands. Absolutely. I mean, experience having done so many of these and having the protocol in place that you can deal with all the potential things that need to be addressed if you go through limb lengthening. So Dr. Michael, tell us uh, how much does it cost? So in the U.S., the cost varies uh, anywhere between $65,000 in our center and $125,000 in other centers. Raz, how have people reacted to your new height and uh, any other surprising benefits, any perks, pluses that came with uh, being over three inches taller? Okay, so when we say three inches, it may not look like a big deal, but it is a big deal. It makes a whole difference to eye level. So there are two groups of people, people who know that I got this surgery done and people who don't. The people who are not aware of this surgery, they think that I have lost tremendous amount of weight and I just look good now. Uh, Gender-wise, interesting part is that the females are the most supportive, encouraging, and happy for me. Even the ones who know that I got the surgery, they're very happy, and they tell me that you know I, I look good. And the interesting part is, I don't know if it was this, the surgery, Dr. Asiak's magic on me, or the medicines he wrote. Uh, for the lack of a better word, I was horny all the time after the surgery. So one month after the surgery, uh, you know, my wife and I, we were uh, having sex every day to the point that I was afraid that I'm going to pull my stitches uh, because stitches were not out yet. So I told her that let's let's hold off maybe, you know, but we had a really good time when that, that first wow. month uh, after the surgery. I, I mean, that's I wouldn't call that a complication. I would call that a positive side effect of the surgery. But, you know, I say it on the show all the time. Your biggest sex organ is between the ears. It's what's in your head. And, you know, you probably, the anxiety that you were having over this, that you were so obsessed with it, that was affecting you in a number of ways. And having the surgery sort of took care of that. And now you're compensating for lost time or whatever, but uh, we're happy to hear that. Very happy to hear that. And, you know, Dr. Michael Asayag and Raz, uh, a great story, a great outcome. Good luck with everything to the both of you.